Okay, I'm going to do a little test of a photo retouch. We're going to be retouching this photograph, the portrait, and we're going to start off in Lightroom. So, first things first, this will be my first retouch. Um, we're going to start off with the photograph. Now, we have Basically what I do is I use Lightroom to get the photograph ready to, uh, to actually do the main stuff in Photoshop. So what I like to do is I like to bring the contrast down. Contrast is over here on the mouse. And I like to bring it down to, we will say like maybe, you have to kind of look at it. Maybe 12, I think, let's make it, actually, you know what, let's make it a 11. And what you need to do is zoom into the face on the contrast, oops. And you want it contrasty, but you still want to see the detail of the skin, which we still have here. And we're good. Then next, um, I will actually start working the temperature. Right now the face is a little bit on the right side. So we'll bring the temperature down. And basically, so we have to pull the temperature up. Face is too warm. Basically, when you're editing a portrait, you actually want to work on the skin tones. It's all in the skin tones of your little edit. So we're going to work on the skin tones. We're going to bring them down. And we're going to bring them down maybe a bit more and see where that light's coming and I, and I think around there is good. Now it depends on the photograph itself. Of course, the photograph wants to be in raw. Um, but you have to go by touch. But you see there where the skin tone is actually nice and uh, even or even enough. And Maybe we'll bring the tint up a bit to find that's actually pretty nice. Okay, we got a contrast. Actually, we have a plus 11. I want it actually down. There we go. Wow. See that? And let's go. Go one more temperature. Okay, that's good. Now, so. We're starting off, there's a before and there's a after. Now, because we put our contrast down to even out the skin tone colors, we want to actually have the detail of the skin. Can we zoom in further? No, it's too zoom in. Let's get the skin tone. And what I'm going to do is increase the clarity. Now, do anyone increase the clarity a little bit? If you increase the clarity too much, it kind of makes everything sharp, I guess, is the effect it has. But you see the way the skin is actually kind of too brittle, there's a lot of it 100%. Um, you kind of want it a little bit. I Say how to maybe it. Seven percent sounds good. Four. Just give me a little. There's little bits of detail. I can see in the cheap one. I don't know how well it's come out on the screen. Just as little bits of detail that I like. And then the vibrant saturation, we leave that alone. And um, saturation, roll, and luminosity. Let's go to the roll. And we're going to maybe, let's see. Let's see, increase the reds. 
And the hole, it gives you a uh, slide to, I guess, the left hand side. You get more red, right hand side, you get more green. So just put it back in the center. And you see here on the cheeks, and around the nose, and around the eyes. Obviously, the lips are going to be made, but we'll in uh, Photoshop, we're going to have hands on his lips. But there's a, there's a bit of red, you always have red around this area, around the nose, around the eye. So we're going to bring it over to the right hand side in red, but very slightly, because we don't want it looking too green. And we're just going to eyeball where that red starts to fall off to where it doesn't look green. And I'm kind of liking it at four. All right? Now, I would never go past 10. I'll just bring it full on my but let's just test it. And this would never, like, see there, there's 9, there's 11. It's actually not too bad. So, hmm. And of course, we're going to zoom out. Zoom out to full. So, hmm. Let's be full right. Hmm. You see with all the adjustments we have done, see where the skin tone is nice and even. Now let's go back beforehand. You see, there's a warmth to the skin, but it's also fairly red. And now there's an evenness to everything. And basically in Lightroom, all of you use Camera Raw. I personally prefer Lightroom, the controls are the lack of better word, nicer views. But what we're doing is we're kind of getting everything very flat and even tone. And, it, and it's all about the skin tones. All the background, we don't care about that for now. We will work that later. Now, also the next thing, you can do sharpening. Twenty. Now you can hit Option on a Mac. I'm not quite sure um, on a PC what it is, but it's up. I'm using a Mac, obviously. And we're going to go Mask. And you can mask it. You pull it over. Anything that's red, I'm sorry, is uh, white. It's been sharpened, and anything that's black is not. So. See all and I used to a lot of times people to do it and I'm to do it to get the outline um, of a figure a sharper. And I actually want all that skin tones the uh whether the Ipu was counter was prominent. So I want to do a sharpen. And I like the way see the way it's got that flatness. Now it's looking really, really good. Now you can remove chromatic aberrations, and um, there's a good place to see that would be in here. Look at four. Green. And you can use a manual on that. And let's see. See the purple is on. Go into manual and see when I come back and put the red. Let's bring her back. See the purple, I think you can notice it. Basically, on this, if you go into an area that is very dark and very bright, the contrast will be able to get those chromatic aberrations. And there it's gone. Now, we we'll also look around the edges. Of the skin, we're looking at the clothing of the skin, and we're looking pretty good here. Of course, this side would be fine. And it's, it's a bit of green here. Mm, it's not, it's not major. Let's go down to the green one and let's see. Okay. Okay. Maybe I can add it here. Maybe 
Okay, so we're basically ready for that room. And we're ready for Photoshop. We're going to go to Photo, Edit in, and we're going to Adobe Photoshop CC. And now she will open up in the Adobe Photoshop. So we have a photograph, and now what the first thing we're going to do is retouch the skin. So we're going to zoom in. Get right up on the skin. There we go. Now, we are going to go to Spot Healing Brush. And we go to the Patch Tool. And we've got a background layer here, and we're going to make a copy that we don't, if anything goes wrong, we can always delete the uh, copy layer, and we'll always have the original layer. So I'm going to use Command J, and we get a copy layer. And this layer, we're going to go, we'll call it Skin, S K I N S K. H is Okay. Now, patch to not much to do here. We go around the bit areas where there's uh, some pimples or bumps or whatever. These are actually more freckles. I will move one here. And done. Uh, and one here. And one here and one here. And now there's one that will, uh, I guess, you won't call it a wrinkle, but a crease. We'll just go along it gently on the outside of it and over here again and just lift up and source from that piece of skin and you can see. It's gone. It's too much. Now you can go crazy with this. All the pins. Of course, the crazy one to go. More wetness there than anything. There also is a spot healing at the rush, but I personally prefer the hatch tool. It seems to do a better job. You always want to take your sample from close by uh, where your source material is. See on the eye there's a bit of redness there. Let me push that up there. And we're gonna get the redness out. Sometimes eyes are bloodshot. This isn't actually that bad. Let's 
And sometimes you see there that the first one is another hit. Some fighters we don't have to go crazy in the back of just potentially the zoom out of it to get more perspective. You can take away some of the very big ones now. So we don't have crazy battles all over the place. We will probably do frequency separation in this arm as well. There's a bit of redness in the arm and a bit of white. I don't want to go too much with this. I mean, it seems like I'm, a lot, I'm leaving a lot of kind of smaller fractals. I'm just sticking out the kind of obvious ones. So, because it has to look like skin. And there's a bit of redness here, I don't like that. And that out. Actually, okay. And we're gonna work with that big one. This one boom. It was only so easy in life to do it. Here's another little red and a little marker scar. And we'll just go around there and map that out. Let's see another one here. This is obviously a portrait where it will be a beautiful portrait, so that's why we're kind of making everything look nice. Okay, and here I think that's fine. We don't get too crazy about that. Okay. So, very important thing when you finish it, select, deselect. Okay. And so, doesn't look like a lot was done, but this is the after, and this is the before. So you see all the little things removed. Okay. Actually, you know what? Can we do something like that? Okay, so what I like to do is most battery is low. Thank you. Oops. Now what I like to do is I like to keep everything clean so I'm gonna flatten my layers and I'm gonna go to the next step which is frequency separation and an action for this which I run and you can You can um, probably check in that way. I might do a video on how to set up frequency separation. But for now, I'll just run the action. So basically, we got dust and scratches. Uh, threshold is at zero. Radius is at eight, right? And what we want to do is we want to get the skin. There's no exact radius to use, but we want to get the skin. Uh, we're looking at the skin tones here and we want to get them. The skin tones here and we want to get those of the body. Those are 13. Now 13 is a bit too much to wear. You see we have the detail around the eyes and the nose. It's a bit too heavy handed. Let's see what 12 looks like. Let's see. And looks like so 10 is kind of nice where we're basically what we're working on here is getting the skin tone that's below the uh, skin surface it's nice and smooth so i have a 10 and i'm going to go with 10. so now we'll, we'll work it back to before so we're going to go to we got the low and got the high and we're going to 
brought here to the Latsu and I'm going to pe get a piece of skin. Now, I like to get a piece of skin that has some kind of shadow area, like here with the eyes, and some light area. So, I get a piece here and a bit of redness. We got a bit of everything that's going to sample from. We're going to go to filter, we're going to go to blur, gauze and blur, very important. And right now it's set at 11, and something previously at 10, but we're going to put it back to 10 as far as dust and scratches is at 10. Very important, those are the same. And you press OK. Right? Now from here on, we're going to do um, frequency separation. So where everything's set up. So you go along here, you stay away from the edges. Then I use Command F. You go up here. Now, then if you want, you can do just select areas. I'm just going to do the whole skin here. And it evens out the skin tone. Move along here. You can see a big difference here then with the eyes. So look at the forward with the eyes and everything will smooth out. And then skin here again. And just smoothing out the skin tone. Before we go to the other parts of the skin, let's go out here a bit. So here's the after, here's the before. So let's zoom in a bit. So here's the before and after. So it's everything smooth and out and got that very clean, healthy skin. Now we're going to zoom out a little bit here. So let's move that on. And we're going to go around here. Now, when you're doing it, a, an arm or any piece of skin, you keep it within that area. You don't go to, completely to the edge. As you can see here, we're moving around, but I'm not going over to the edge. going to bring in across this line here and I'm trying to keep it as steady as I can. There I can. And this might seem very tedious. I'm actually taking my time doing this video. And we're going to go down here again. You see where there's red blotches there? The next thing disappear. Boom. And this may be the last bit. Yeah, just a smooth moving around. Thank you. 
Let's polish. So now, boom, 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 we're going to go layers. I'm going to flatten the image. Now the next thing I'm going to involve in is the eyes. Very important eyes are important. I'm going to get right into the eyes. Now here again I run actions. I actually use a thing called um, what's it called? Greater Dignity. Innocent intelligent being, yes. We have an eye makeover brush. So we got the base foundation. You click it, you run it, you can give you a description of what to do. Here's our brush size. Now we have a black mask, we have our brush and our white, so we're going to be painting. Now what I like to do is, is go to put about 25% The first thing to do is let's go over the side. Let's help him with him. This was a doing the recording. Okay. So we're gonna go first one. We're gonna do a little bit more here if we can. And then we're gonna do more here. Here, we're going to go for the arm at 25%, and then make it bigger, go over it, and then make it bigger, and go over it. And that kind of gives the eye a bit of a pop. Now, iris enhancement. And close the arm. And then here again. Is here and we're actually we make our opacity and make our flow at 100%. And we're going to make the green and browns pop and you want to stay within the iris blunt with like a little black. Line on the other side of the iris, and there's a white stay within that and up into the eyeball. And actually, it minimizes my flow of the solo. So we're going to go back to 25%. And we're going to do the base foundation. We actually didn't do that. Right. Now, here we do the pupil, the dark top, with a very small brush, and then the black part of the outer part of the eyes, as soon as you can, and see the fines of the eyes. So we're going to, we're just going to enhance it. 
Stay away from the black ring that you just made because you don't want to do that out and I don't want to wait for you. Oh, I'm just going to break my mind. So let's see the white CD I have. Let's see the white CD I have. Let's see the white CD I have. Before, let's do the bit of a pop. The iris. Uh, red on see pop my enhancements it will be the pupil I'm sorry the iris it will be the green in her eyes so you darken do a bit of a pop of color and the eye foundation is just the base foundation of the eye it's a bit of a dullness and a bit of brightness and a very subtle. Right? Now, the last thing we're going to do for the eyes. Oh, wait, 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 wait. The brow. We're going to give it the brow a little pop. So, mm -hmm. I'm going to just keep this very subtle. It basically is here. Starting some a little bit. Mm -hmm. Very so it basically makes the zoom out. Makes the eyes more, makes the eyes pop more, and we're going to do a little bit of sharpening action on the eyeball itself. Sometimes you can do it on the lashes if it needs it, uh, but there again has to be very subtle. So what we're going to do now is everything that I've done, we're going to group it and I can show you a before and after. So I press down my shift key on the Mac, so I've got the soft eyelids down the foundation, and then we're going to go down here, and this is the group, it looks like a folder, and it groups everything. So now everything is under that one group. And so I'm going to shut off the one button, eyes before, eyes after, and a very big thing to do is when I look at it, the screen is a little wider, and see so how nice the eyes are there, and then they are before. So see that it's dull, flat, not a pop nice, but it's not over the top, it's very subtle. So I'm very happy with that. Super subtle, very nice, and it makes gives a very beautiful look in this case. And you can flatten the image. Now make sure you're happy with all those results before you flatten an image, because once you flatten the image, you flatten the image. Now these lips of hers. We can go a few ways with the lips and. Um, I'm going to maybe think of a soft gloss. I'm going to run an action on that. Of course, this is all from greater than the actions. So I'm going to let that 
action mode. So basically, for the action, while the action is loading. So we got our lips, but we're going to want to um, just enhance them a little bit. And I think if we give them a, a bit of a gloss, they'll have that uh, kind of a, a bit more beautiful look. Or healthier look, I guess. I actually don't think she has actually any, any makeup on at all. This is taking longer than normal, but that's because we're recording. Now, after we finish with this a little bit, I just want to do this. It's worth it just to give it that lips a little pop. We are going to do dodging and burning. And once we get it finished with dodging and burning, we're pretty much you know, all the hard stuff is done, and then it's basically going to be going into the finishing touches. My god, this is taking forever. Well, let's make sure it makes a big difference. Are we nearly there? Are we there yet? As they say, whoa, we're done. Okay. <laughs> so on this, I like to put the opacity to 100. And then I like to put the flow to 10. Because you just, because they're lit, you don't want to just paint it on hard. I'm also using um, a Wacom uh, pen. For this, it's nice because you can build up for stuff like this, you can build up the effect nicely. And because the lower part of the upper lip is a little bit darker than the lower lip, because once you get, as you can see, the sun is coming from above, you see that the highlight is on the rim of the nose. And Cheekbones and right in the center here. This will actually get more light, so you can do more of a build up here than below. I'm kind of liking that. Now, I'm going to turn it off. See there before? Oh, just get some nice pop and then zoom out to see what it looks like before. Super subtle before and after. It just gives that nice and kind of a fresh feel. So, here again, let's see. I'm going to flatten the image. Now, you can do two, uh, sorry, a T whitening, but because there's so little of it showing. And it's going to recess back. I don't know, I think it might be a distraction if we actually made it the tube bright. So I'm actually going to not do that. If the, outward, if the mouth was open more and there was more tube showing, and if light, the uh, light was hitting on the teeth, then I would definitely do a brightening on it. But because they're naturally not in the light, if I was to brighten those up, it might look actually weird because uh, the light is not doing what it should. Now, okay, we're going to go here. Okay. Maybe go back there. Okay. So now what we're going to do is do a dodge and burn. Basically, dodge, burn. Okay, what I might do first is. It's actually nice high lights naturally. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna actually do a burn first. 
So one paint, yeah, flow, pencil, okay. So using a walking pamphlet and what we're gonna do is I have on the cheek to the right hand side of the hard left cheek below the uh, with the high cheekbone this area and get one pass on the other side it actually got more of a shadow with a pass there. Uh, now we've got the nose rim and the lower part of the nose it's in a natural shadow and we're going to just give it more of a shadow. Uh, and there's already a kind of shadow on this side of the rim of the nose and on the other side we'll give it a bit. And see why it's a little more of a highlight here in the center, usually on the sides with more of a shadow. We're going to go here a little bit and here a little bit. Zoom in a bit. I'm not quite sure what this part of the face is called, but right above the lips, there's that little kind of dip, and it's a shadow as well. So I'm going to make it a little darker and a little bit darker. Now, the whole concept you know, behind dodging and burning is to get more dimension, three dimension to the face. So we've just burned right now, and here's before, here's after. And now we're going to dodge the face, which is brightening and highlighting the area. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up above the eye over here. So now the little part we have that little uh, indication just above the lips. On either side of it there's like a little ridge, so I like to give it a little room, a little room on either side. And down here again, a little bit of room, but it's more of a level pass and a little level pass. And I build up that area, and then over here, the before and here's the after. Now you can also it's actually like that. I'm gonna do burn it first. Give it the rest of the body. So here again let's make a a brush bigger. This natural areas like you see along here is that natural thing. And here thing. Over here, so that's a little naturally darker. Yeah. This is natural. Yeah. 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 
Let's give us thank to Doctrine of Shadows that go around here. I usually don't put more because I want it the shadows to get even. So you see the face is pretty even. But you see here there's a kind of a lighter highlight here, so I'm going to make it in stamp and dodging, which is lightning. And I'm going to do it here. Okay. So now let's do a before and after. Now I want you to look at the arms in particular and see how that has changed. So this is obviously with the dodge of arm without it. With the dodge of arm. Super subtle. Right. So obviously you take your time doing this. This is without any of them. Which is actually very nice because the light there's actually a beautiful light on the face. I'm trying to make it more dimensional. So here we go. I'm happy with that. I'm going to go there and I flatten edge. So <coughs> basically, I have everything pretty much more or less done now. Okay, now next, of course, let's actually, let's okay. okay, now next, what we can do is, we're going to be color grading, and there's a few ways of doing this, I'm going to show you probably the easiest way. And that I, is by getting the Nick Collection, which is free. I would just Google Nick Collection, and they have a. I would just download all of the collection because it's all free. You can have it, but I basically use Color Effects Pro, so we have it as a action here, and it's going to load up my photograph into. Color Effects Pro 4. Now, okay, let's show it in a little bit more. Now, what I like to use here is Pro Contrast. Right. And I get the dynamic contrast and I move it up. And just looking at the photograph, you can know, see it makes the photograph talk. It basically contrasts the, contrasts the midtones. And here's a before and after. You see the way it gives that pop. Right. So there's one section that we did. Now we're going to need another filter. And we're going to go. Film effects, vintage, and what I like to do is I go down to film time, and I put a 14, right? Now, green film strength is too high, but green pixel, uh, uh, pixel or green per pixel, I put that up at 100, and what that means is it's not, it's not green then. Like if I put it very low, you can, you can see, see where it's very uh, grainy. You can put it up at the highest, which is 500, I believe. Okay. Water. Okay. It takes away all the grain. And the grain is gone. And now, 
the vinaigrette is on the it's, it's on the bright side here. If we get open, put it over here, it's going to get on the dark side, and which I don't want. But I'm going to do right now. I want to put that at zero. The brightness is at zero. Now it is way too warm. We need to warm it down. Moving the saturation up a little bit. And the film strength is up too high. We're going to clear that a little bit. You're going to see like now. See right now. Whoa, now we're getting there. So it's a bit of before and after. There's before without any film grain. And then there's after. You see, there's a nice warm in the skin. And let me see how I like that. Now, the fact that they, this picture, the outer edges of it, there's like a lot of darkness naturally there. We're not going to put any sort of a, a, a darkening on the outer edge. And the fact that she is actually naturally highlighted in the photograph. She is naturally kind of like the brightest, warmest, sharpest part of the photograph. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go saturation. A lot of this will be what I feel. So what we'll do is saturation right now is at 14. Let's bring it up to 25 and see what that's going to do. It didn't actually do a hell of a lot. There is a bit more richness. I noticed the bolt in the back got a little richer, but she seems to be fine. I don't see anything that that's been the temperatures there. If I bring down a lot, it gets in a cooler type of photograph. Like now, it's kicking in. And that's more of a, you know, maybe a winter time, but might be a bit of warmth. And this tail is actually pretty good. Is there something? Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is compare it again. A lot of this is feel. So here's the original. And there's definitely a nice little warmth to that. So I never want to overdo anything. I can hold a couple of light on that. Does it? Let's bring the saturation down a bit. I'm really liking where we're at right now. It's nice and subtle, but it's definitely popping the photograph. So I'm going to go okay with that. Now, as far as these settings go, I would definitely have a, pic a grain per pixel at 500, which is no grain. You want your film strength definitely to be on the lower end. This is at 19. And then, first of Van Graten, I would initially have it at zero with no effect. Uh, you just see how it looks when in the photograph, depending on what type of photograph you have. You might want to darken the edges. And then the rest of the warmth and the saturation, that's where you do the little subtleness, as you saw us do already. So that will be per photograph. So a different photograph, I might have those set completely different. A lot of times, actually, the warmth, I have it actually up. I usually have not in the negative. But this was actually taken on a summer day. So it was actually a lot of natural want. And we're going to OK that. So there you saw it kicked in. So for free software, it gets you color graded quickly. It's the photograph popping. So before, if 
Follow Effects Pro from Nick Collection. That's the before. There's the after. And now we are cooking with gas. So now we are going to flatten that. Because I'm liking that a lot. And let me go back to my actions again. Now I have this corrector which I run. Yeah, I kind of like that. It popped it a bit more. I'm going to flatten that layer. Okay. And I have a little pop brush. This is from uh, Creative Gatsby, a color pop brush, and sometimes I use that. The back mask is the soft white brush. Okay. So what I do here now is. This I use to pop certain colors a bit more. So now look at this bulk here in the back. And if you just pop it, it pops them a bit more. And usually a lot of times I just use it for background. Just get our colors pop it. And I can it can go up much to a grey colour here. But I It just gives a nice interest of light. So let me go to the before. And after. I can't remember that. Before. And the next color. So I think I'm pretty much there now. So I'm liking what I'm seeing. We're gonna close it, we're gonna save it. Close on Photoshop, it's gonna bring it back up into Lightroom. Now Lightroom we just go over the slight things again. So basically I might get the sharpen back up at 20. I'll mask, and I'm going to mask again, and I'll actually do it like before, have the skin, you know, <coughs> be a bit sharper. And I'm going to see what that looks like. It's like small, and you look at it on full screen, and I kind of really like that. But the one area I might do a slight adjustment to. See the dress in the bottom. Yeah. 
Let me see what else can we do here. Four on it. This was the before photograph. And this is the after. Big difference. Before. So I hope you like that. And thank you very much. And we will. Quick now, okay?